It's finally time to get to work on NoobSock and everything is changing now. Uh, up until this point, I have been repairing the Jeep. Uh, I have been fixing, cleaning the Jeep, getting rid of parts off the Jeep that I wasn't gonna use. Now we can finally start tearing it apart a little bit more and then putting parts back on it. Uh, I have been trying to get everything together so that the assembly of the Jeep goes quickly. Um, I'm using some companies that I've worked with in the past and other companies that are new to me, so hopefully everything's gonna go right together. The cool thing about building a Wrangler is you can buy really good off-the-shelf parts and they practically, they almost always bolt right on. Um, I say that with a grain of salt because there's always little problems here and there, but um, for the most part, I am gonna use a bolt-on suspension, bolt-in axles, uh, bolt-on bumpers, bolt-on winch, basically all the stuff that I would want for an off-road rig um, in basic bolt-on form. You should be able to duplicate this build at your home. Is it a cheap build? No, but it's not a super high dollar build either. It's kind of middle of the road. It's kind of what I would tell somebody to do if they were buying a Wrangler and wanted to build it up and actually go wheeling with it, um, but not looking for the most extreme off-road Wrangler. So uh, the plan for today is I'm gonna finally get rid of those tires and wheels. I do not love 20 inch wheels on my Jeeps. So unless the tires are like 42s, those tires and wheels are gonna go and I'm gonna start deleting all the suspension and all the axles because I have a whole new suspension and I have those new crate axles to put under this. Uh, I'm going with a suspension from Rock Jock. You may not have really heard that name before or maybe you have heard that name before in relation to an axle. Rock Jock now is different. Rock Jock is a suspension company that is being run by a gentleman by the name of John Curry. And John Curry is part of the Curry family who you have probably heard of from years who were building axles. So a couple years ago, the family decided there was like, there was the father and Frank Curry, and then there were his sons, and then they were their kids after that. And they were getting to the point where there were a lot of people involved and they were trying to figure out the best direction for the company. So one of the sons, John Curry, and his children, um, his son and daughter, Brandon and Amanda, they kind of decided they would do the suspension side and they would call it Rock Jock. So it's Rock Jock 4x4 by John Curry. Um, John Curry has done a lot of amazing things in the off-road industry over the years. He has been a competitive rock crawler. He has raced in Ultra 4 and won many times. Um, he's been around, he knows how to build stuff. I feel confident that his suspension will work really well on this little Jeep. Um, I don't know that it's gonna be perfect because this is a two door and their suspension is kind of built for a four door. So it might actually lift it more than I like. So I might have to tweak the springs a little bit, but the things that I really like about the John Curry's suspension is uh, the Johnny joint adjustable rod ends that he uses on the suspension links. I think those are really great. Um, I've used them over the years in different projects. Um, so my first step, lay out all of the suspension on this table and make sure that everything's here. I didn't open the boxes. I read all the boxes. I looked at the parts list, this 38 page instruction manual um, and try to make sure that all the parts are here. The next step is dive into this thing, start taking all the old axles out, all the old suspension links. And what I'm gonna do is remove the tires and wheels, go through and undo as much of the suspension as I can, and then bolt the tires and wheels back on, bring it down and do the final deinstallation so I can roll the axles out from underneath it. So let's get started, let's get this thing torn apart. Brakes look. Ooh. Mm. Okay. Not great. The Mopar axles reuse the unit bearing and the brakes off of the stock axle. Uh, these 
this is a Dana 30, the Mopar axle is a Dana 44. From what I'm told, you can use all of these parts on the Mopar axle. But this Jeep also has over 100,000 miles on it. So I think my plan is I'm gonna order new unit bearings and new brake pads, maybe rotors and calipers, depending on the price of everything and get all that stuff coming so that when I'm putting the new knuckles on that are coming from Rock Jock, I can have all new parts up front instead of trying to run this old stuff and chance it not holding up when I have bigger tires on there. Much like when I removed the bumpers and engine and drive shafts, it's time to go all over the vehicle with some sort of penetrating fluid. Today I'm using liquid wrench. I don't know if it's a better wrench than all the other styles, but I found it on the shelf, so we're gonna use it. Um, I don't really have one brand of this type of stuff that I recommend. I kind of use whatever I can find in the shop and we are going to go at everything. Sway bar bolts, um, steering bolts, uh, pitman arm bolts, suspension link bolts, sway bar mounting bolts, more sway bar bolts, track bar, track bar bolts on the back side, shock bolts, suspension bolts, more suspension bolts, every suspension bolt, so many of them. Um, now if you hadn't already started this on your Jeep, you would also be removing the front drive shaft. I've already done that. Uh, all of this front axle disconnect, that will be going away. And while I'm under here, I'm gonna go spray all the rear bolts, rear lower shock bolts, rear lower link bolts, upper, upper bolts. Upper bolts up here. That one's kind of hidden. Sway bar bolts, track bar bolts. You're gonna wanna get as many of these as you can. Some of them are hidden up inside the frame and cross our fingers that those are going to clear. So, I think we are looking pretty good. Most of the time, the last thing you install and the first thing you remove are the shocks. So we're gonna start with shocks, then we're gonna go to steering and sway bars, and then we'll have just the suspension links, and um, then we'll remove the track bars. That'll allow the axle to kind of shift side to side a little bit, and then we'll actually remove the final um, suspension links, probably when it's back down on the ground, or we'll like take the nuts off, but we won't take the bolt out until we bring it down to the ground. And then once it's on the ground with the tires on, we'll take those last bolts out and should be able to push the thing, raise the Jeep back up and the axle will roll out. Don't forget all of your plugs, all of your wires, all of your hoses, because there's things like brake hoses, vent hoses, speed sensor wires, uh, parking brake cables. Uh, so there's a lot of little things to go through. Um, so your Jeep may be different than my Jeep, but that's the general checklist. Uh, shocks, sway bars, all of the wires, pipe, hoses, and plugs, and then uh, track bars and suspension links. And the coils will just fall out when the axles come out. So don't really worry about those. But when you do start disconnecting things, watch that they don't pop out and knock you in the head.
Another thing to remember is a lot of the hardware from your suspension will be reused with your new suspension. Read the instructions, see if your suspension uh, has new hardware. If it's a new Jeep like this, a lot of times you just reuse the stuff. Sometimes if it's an older Jeep, YJ, CJ, you might actually need to request new hardware or see if the company that you're getting your suspension kit from offers new hardware because after 30, 40 years, stuff can get rusty. As you can see, there was a lot of tension on the shocks. I probably should have had the Jeep on the ground and either on the way to the tires or with jack stands underneath the shocks before I removed them. Now everything is hanging uh, basically from the sway bars and the track bar and the link arms. So that is what is kind of keeping it all in place at this point. Next step, remove the sway bars. Do you even know what a sway bar does? So the sway bar has a little link here and then it comes up around and then has another little link on the driver's side. And as the vehicle kind of goes into a sway type situation, body lean, it helps kind of counter that and try to keep the vehicle flat. Sway bars are great for on-road driving. Um, they're, they can be a hindrance on off-road driving depending on how they're tuned. I'm gonna be replacing this factory sway bar with a rock jock um, sway bar. And I've used those in the past on lots of things. My rock buggy has one, my tube sock TJ has two. Over the years, I've had really good luck with them because it helps to... It helps both on and off-road driving. All right, sway bar disconnected. One more thing out of the way. Um, I could probably disconnect these now from the axle itself um, just to get it out of the way and have one less thing to be wrestling. I'll, again, keep all the hardware. This is kind of a death trap. This is a impact to an extension to a wobbly. <laughs> no one lost an eye this time. Sway bar, gone. You know what this is called? This is a called a flag bolt because, or a flag nut, because it drops down into a little slot and then when you tighten the bolt into it, that thing will rotate and then hit on the stop, on like the edge of the slot. Or if you want to loosen it, it'll, it'll rotate the other way. So that little flag, that piece that sticks out from the nut is like putting a wrench on that end, but you don't have to. These are great as long as those little tiny welds or crimps all stay on. If they break off, you're gonna to have to get in there with a wrench and hold on to the nut. It's time to remove the next two things. The drag link, which is the link that runs from the steering box pitman arm down to the passenger side knuckle. This is your drag link. This is your tie rod. Um, you can leave the tie rod on for now. We're gonna just take the drag link off. And to do that, there's a nut up there that you have to, oh, for some reason I put this thing up in the air. Now I gotta stand up on a ladder to break the whole thing loose. There it goes. Current steering on a lot of vehicles just use nylock nuts. Old school 
style was to use a castle nut. And a castle nut would be a nut that once it's screwed onto the tie rod end, there was a hole and through that hole you would slide, and through the nut, you would slide a uh, cotter pin. I kind of like that style better than the nylocks, um, but you're really not supposed to reuse nylocks. So, all right. Now the way this next step goes, we're gonna need to get a little medieval on it. To remove the drag link tie rod end from the pitman arm, you need a hammer. You can do it with a pickle fork, but that'll usually mess up the boot on the tie rod. Oftentimes, a good swift hit to the uh, pitman arm with a hammer will get this uh, tie rod end out of the drag link to drop out. Now, here's the thing. That tie rod has a shaft and that shaft is tapered and where it's tapered, it goes up into a tapered hole from that's going up into the pitman arm. And once that thing is tight, that taper just kind of wedges itself together. So you need something to really shock the metal to get that to come apart. You're not literally beating the tie rod out of the pitman arm. You're just hitting the pitman arm really hard right around here. And then while pulling down on this, notice I've left the nut up there on it to try and catch it so it doesn't fall on my head. Also, I'm gonna turn this all the way one direction so that I can get a really good shot at hitting that. There we go. So I'm gonna hit this straight on like this. Watch out, you got air lines and transmission lines and everything else around there. And we're gonna hit it right here and this thing's just gonna fall right out. Fallen right out yet. Oh, maybe we should spray it with some stuff. Even though that's a tight fit in there, a little lube never hurt. Now, the next step you can do, put some pressure on it. Feed a bar over the... You can put a little pressure on it by feeding a bar over the drag link and under the tie rod so that you're in effect kind of pulling down on the drag link and then hit this thing. If that doesn't work, get a bigger one. Jeez, that thing does not want to come out. Come on, you. <laughs> it did it. Bigger hammer. Fix the problem, as it usually does. Sometimes it makes other problems. Reach up here, take the nut off. There you can see how the shaft of the tie rod end is tapered and it goes up into a tapered hole. Um, the pitman arm got a little bit of beat up, but not too, too bad. I feel good about it. Next step, track bar. And don't forget, this is a perfect time to go around and take a lot of photos with your camera or your phone 
so that you can remember how to put everything back together. Hold up. Oh, glasses are getting fogged up. I'm, <clears throat> I made a mistake. I was getting too excited about taking everything apart, getting all the big parts off, and I really forgot about the brake lines and those uh, speed sensor wires that go back here. And when I went back to loosen them, they were being stretched. So you wanna get a lot of these brackets loosened up before you even probably take the shocks off. I don't know why I jumped the gun. I was so excited to get this thing apart. Um, so what I'm doing now is I'm going to remove the brake calipers, lift those off, and probably either hang them back here or disconnect the banjo bolt completely. And the problem with disconnecting the banjo bolt completely is it makes a mess because all the brake fluid wants to drain out, and then you have to re-bleed all the brakes. But uh, I know I'm going to replace the shoes, or the shoes. <laughs> The, the pads and probably either have this rotor turned or get a new rotor. Um, the rest of the brakes are probably fine, the calipers. So I'll probably just hang those up back here for reuse. But I wanna get the caliper off and get the rotor off so I can get to where the speed sensor goes into the unit bearing and I can disconnect that. Plus with the rotors and calipers off, the axle's a little bit lighter, easier to manage once we are ready to drop this thing out of here. So you're gonna need a big old breaker bar with a 21 millimeter socket. And you gotta get inside here. And then you wanna just reef down on this. Breaking loose. There we go. There's two of them. There's a top one here. And then a bottom one down here. That one I had already broken loose. So, remove the calipers. Disconnect all those brackets before you remove the shocks. So hopefully you're watching, hopefully you're not like tearing your Jeep apart while simultaneously watching this video. Because if you are, you're gonna have to fast forward or something. I'm gonna feed this in here. And try and get that top caliper bolt out with an extension and a wobbly. Look at that. We moved with these and didn't fall on our face. There's the bolt. We got the bottom bolt out already. Now, when you take the caliper off the rotor, there's a couple different things you want to make sure. Make sure all of the wires that attach to this brake line are disconnected. There's some little plastic clips that hold it all together. They, you can pry them out. Hopefully they're reusable. If not, you'll have to get new ones. Um, I have this contraption, which is a U-bolt welded to a U-bolt that I can throw over the frame and hang the caliper from. Another option is because this thing is so long, you can actually bring it over here and set it right on the arm of your lift, which is what I'm gonna do. Just be careful working around that, that it doesn't fall off the lift and bonk you on the head. Um, next step, we're gonna loosen up. I'm gonna take this rotor off, which should just knock off, and then I can access the fastener for the speed sensor, which is right behind here. Also, don't forget your caliper bolts. Um, you might want to even just screw them right back into the caliper. spray around here so that the rotor wants to fall off. Also going to grab a piece of wire, bailing wire or a zip tie or something, and wire the drag link to the tie rod so that it stops flopping around.
Now we want to get this. Oh, I was about to smash that thing with a hammer, but look, there's a bolt right there. A little Torx bolt. We got to pull that out to get the rotor off. Look at that. As soon as you take that bolt out, the rotor just falls right off. And we'll take that bolt and we'll thread it back into the unit bearing here. And then right there, you can see, if I turn this, right there you can see there's an Allen head bolt that has to come out and then this sensor will feed back up through here and then the wires that were connected will be disconnected. I'm going to guess that is a metric five. Oh yeah. Metric master guesser. So the sensor wire pops out like that and then feeds up through there. And then all of this stuff, which you don't want to rip out when you take the axle out, we're going to set back here on the arm by the caliper. And then we'll go to the other side. I just removed the axle vent, which goes right down here to the differential. So I have removed the caliper and the calipers swung out of the way. I removed the speed sensor cord wire plug from the unit bearing. I have removed the shocks, kind of jumped the gun on that. I should have done some of those things before. Um, I started removing the bolt, the nuts off of all the hardware on the links. There's the two upper links, two lower links and the track bar. Um, and the coils will probably just fall out as it comes down. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to disconnect. I'm going to take the nut off the back of the track bar at the frame, take the nut off the lower links on both sides, probably on the axle side, and then we'll lower it down to the ground. I'll either put the tires back on it or I'll just find a dolly or just put it right on the ground and disconnect everything and then drag the axle out of the way. And then we'll move to the rear. Okay, are we missing anything? I'm gonna remove this jack stand that's underneath the axle. And the coil springs are just about ready to fall out. 
So I'm going to lift those out so that's one less thing to fall and smash me on the head. This one's still kind of captured in there, so I'm going to leave that. Now I'm going to bring the whole Jeep to the ground, put, some, uh, put a floor jack underneath the axle, and then disconnect. Then just pull the bolts out of the axle. There's two uppers, two lowers, and then I'm going to take this track bar bolt out, and the axle should roll out. Now I'm going to disconnect the track bar mount first. This bolt controls the axle's movement side to side. So the suspension is, is four links with a track bar. So it has two links up going forward and, forward and back that control the axle's movement up and down and keeps the axle from twisting. And then it has a, third, a fifth link, which is your track bar. Some people call it a pan hard bar, depending on where you're from. It all does the same thing. Basically keeps the axle from shifting side to side. But it usually has a lot of load under it and it's usually pretty substantial pattern. This is a bolt that we will reuse. We're going to put this on the bench. This upper bolt that's right here, if you're lucky, I can knock it out. Rubber mallet, just like that. And then we'll do the same on the other side. Two upper bolts are out. Put those on the bench. The two lower bolts, with the axle on the ground and the track bar out, are not under any sort of bind. And also with the upper links out. I can literally reach inside there, pull them out by hand. With all the bolts out, uh, from the, the upper, blip, blip. I need to drink it soon. It's getting parched. With all the bolts out of the upper and lower links and the track bar, the shocks out, everything disconnected, drive shafts out, I should be able to raise this up by pushing the button, and the Jeep will go up and the axle will stay on the ground. <laughs> See you guys next time.